Welcome to season two of The Protectors. New format. I've moved from one video platform to a new one. It's not even new. It's Zoom. I mean, who doesn't use Zoom, right? Especially now in the age of COVID. Um, we are adapting our technology to the virus. Today, excellent guest. He's been on before, like way, way back when I first started this podcast, when all I used to do was, was a Q&A interview and interrogation. Josh Boyer, incredible backstory. I get it. Uh, just a good dude, good friend. And Josh, welcome. Thanks, man. Glad to be back, man, for sure. Me too, man. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a ride, man. It has been a ride. Definitely, man. A lot has changed in the, in the last uh, year, whatever it's been since I was on last time. So yeah, yeah, I'd love to man. talk with you about some of that stuff. <laughs> Let's talk about it, man. And one yeah. thing for you is changing your format. Because you do what I would love to do, or you were doing it, is like do in-person interviews. You have a lot of access out there in California. Yeah. You're not so much unless you want to talk politics. And I stay away from that. How have you adapted this, brother? You know, man, um, I initially, when I was doing the podcast, like you said, I was doing it all in person. And then I, um, I decided that I was going to go back to work and work for corporate. So I kind of like started transitioning, like where I was like, I was just taking a little break from the podcast. Because to be honest with you, man, it, it was very much uh, financially draining, you know, doing it the way yeah. that I was doing it, um, traveling all over the country, you know, renting cars, getting hotels. I mean, it, it wasn't cheap. And um, I think the, um, the relationships that I built, the network, the network that I built in the process was totally worth it. Yeah. Um, but I had to like shift gears a little bit. So I went back to work and then in the midst of working, all this COVID-19 stuff happens. And um, I really had a strong calling to, to get back to podcasting. And I was like, man, I need to, I had a bunch in the pipeline that I hadn't released yet. And a couple of people had reached out and were like, yeah, you know, I really think, you have a gift, you know, you have a talent to, yeah. to podcast and it's not, um, not everybody has the ability to just come on a podcast or have people on their podcast they've never met before and do an interview. It's, it's actually kind of nerve wracking. Um, and so a lot of people were reaching out saying that I should do it. So I did kind of like how you're doing now with the zoom and, uh, doing my best to, uh, to not screw it up. Um, haven't been ultra successful with that yet, but, um, we can talk about that too. Yeah. But, we will. Uh, yeah, yeah. So no, I've just I, I'm doing Zoom now and um, reaching out to people. I'm in the middle of doing a 12 part uh, podcast series uh, specifically covering mental health issues. Um, I don't know if you knew Rory Hamill, but he was a uh, he was on my podcast and he unfortunately lost his battle with his demons mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I was I was crushed, man, like heartbroken. Um, you know, you, you get this connection, especially when you do the podcast in person. Mm -hmm. I mean, just doing a podcast alone, you connect with that person. So you're learning something about them. Uh, but then doing it in person, it's even more so, you know, because you're feeling their emotion. You're feeling everything yep. that's that's there. And uh, I, I, I considered him a friend, you know, and we reached out to each other multiple times after the podcast, stayed in touch. And, uh, yeah, he lost that battle. So, you know, um, I had a strong calling to do something in terms of mental health. And uh, so, yeah, I'm doing a 12-part podcast series specifically covering that. And it's all – a couple of them will be in person, um, but most of them will be remote like this one. That's a, the concept of your podcast, which is a lot different than mine. Mine, I could jump all over topics, but you really are tapping into, like, this internal beast that some of us have. Yeah. And it is a calling, man. It's not, it's not like what people are thinking. Oh, it's like, you know, you have a calling to go do a mission trip to South America, but no, this is, it's podcasting is, it's not what people think. So we're going to sit here and, Hey, I'm just going to go ramble for 30 minutes and people are going to want to listen and get something out of it. But when you start talking mental health and you start telling a story just like that, where you're meeting someone, you, you do become connected to your guests. Definitely. Yeah. I think a lot of it is because we're sharing uh, things that most people, when they come on the podcast, I've heard this multiple times with people on my podcast that they're sharing things with me that they've never shared ever in their entire life. Yep. Um, and they're like, I don't know what it is about you or your show or whatever, but uh, they feel comfortable sharing some of their deepest things with me. And, and I'm honored by that. And I think it's, it's a necessary work because the more people that share, um, the more freedom it gives other people to come out of their shells and share their story. Cause a lot of people are, are captive by these, they're held captive by their own stories and their own demons and their own grief. 
And the more that you get that stuff out, uh, just the better you can process it, the better you feel. Um, and then you can also find a sense of community because there's a lot of people that are struggling with the same things that you are. And uh, when you have that sense of community around you, it's, it's, a, it's very, very healing for sure. It's healing for us too. I, I always tell everybody as a podcast host, you know, that one of the biggest reasons I got into it was selfish. I wanted to talk to other people. I wanted to <laughs> share. I wanted to hear their stories. And every time I talk to someone, I get something out of it. Um, yeah. But it does get dark and deep sometimes, especially when we get into mental health, which we have to. You can't deny that we're all going through something right now. Yeah. Yep. How's your family been taking this whole, uh, you know, sequestered, quarantine, everything else? You know, when it first started, uh, I was a little, uh, not a little, I, I was very nervous. You know, I, I didn't know kind of what was happening at all. I happened like pretty suddenly. Um, and, you know, I was, uh, I was crippled with anxiety at first just because I was watching what was happening on the outside. It wasn't necessarily getting sick or getting the virus. It was more uh, the reaction of humans, you know, and what yes. was happening with them and, you know, running out and, and buying toilet paper in the midst of a virus outbreak um, didn't do any favors for me in terms of like my faith in humanity. No. And, um, so, yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to make sure I was prepared. Um, it really highlighted for me the ways that I wasn't prepared. Um, should things get dire? Should the supply chains break down? Should there be a shortage of food? You know, like what, kind of things do I have in place to like really protect m myself and my family. And uh, so when it first kicked off, yeah, I'd say I was, I was really, I was definitely anxious. Um, and since it's um, gone on, I've just, you know, I'm going to choose to live over uh, living in fear, you know, so I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. I think a lot of us has hit that point where, okay, you know, we, we got through the zombie apocalypse portion of it for now. Uh, you stock up on a two, three weeks, four weeks worth of food got the water, yeah. got the ammo, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, sure. you get to that point where you're just like, I got to live, man. I got to get out of this house. I got to go see things. I got to get back to nature. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's so that's out. what I'm trying to do. Just going and uh, I took my kids yesterday, went up to the mountains and went in the river, hung out. And, uh, I'm going to keep doing that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I, I might get the virus. I might get sick. I might, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of things might happen, but, um, I'm not going to live in fear of that anymore. So uh, should I get sick? I hope it does. It's not dire. Um, you know, and I hope I don't infect anybody else that ends up in a dire situation, but um, I, I just want to live, you know, and, and our immune systems yeah. have a, a great way of ending some of these pandemics. So hopefully that's the case here. Well, your brain has to live too. You have to get out there. And get, <laughs> your brain needs some positive impulses, man. You need some sun, some vitamin D. You can't just yeah. sit in this house with this stuffiness going on all day long. Dude, I was trapped. I think that's what was killing my mental health uh, for sure was the fact that I was like, <clears throat> felt locked in the house, you know, and, and just even outside of COVID-19 or whatever, um, like me as a person, like I have to be free. I have to be moving yeah. and shaking and going and, and doing things. I can't just stay still um in one place for too long and um yeah just being forced to kind of be hunkered down in my house with my family although i'm enjoying the, this extra time with my kids i'm enjoying the yeah. extra time with my wife um i do need that freedom to like move and go and see and kind of uh, get out in nature so that's just what i'm doing man i'm gonna i, I hike i go outside and work out in the sun um i'm a little red you know because i've been uh out in the sun a lot but um you know, I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing. No, man. I, and that's what's cool about social media is I can see you getting out there. And, you're, you know, the thing about your podcast and in person and everything, you used to do them in like some interesting areas and locales, you know, the mobile podcasting platform. Yeah, man. And, and you've changed the platform of your podcasts. Um, from my backstory, you changed to a different name, and now you're back to my backstory. Yep. I like my backstory because it's not just <laughs> yeah. about your back. Right. But it's like when you're talking, I, well, like when I first like started talking to you, I thought it was about like, I'm like, that's a cool name, man. You're, when your guests are talking about their backstory or right. your backstory. But initially it was like a lot about your injury and how you had to suffer through addiction and, and mental health and everything else. And now I like you're back to the roots. You're getting back yep. to these deep conversations. Not that you got away from it, but focus that's the one thing about the podcast game that's it's kind of tough to get 
that focus going for a long period of time. Yeah. You know, I, um, I started the, my backstory, you know, and it was like, it was my creation. I felt like proud about it. I felt like super excited and pumped up. And then, um, I had teamed up with a couple guys and, you know, they were like, Oh, you should change the name. You know, you're getting real with all these people. I should change to getting real with Josh Boyer, you know, so your name's kind of included in the podcast. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and I was shifting, uh, you know, emotionally and, and spiritually with a lot of things. I was, you know, kind of um, being exposed to things I had never been exposed to uh, previously. And so, you know, I, I switched the name for a little bit and I felt like I'd lost a little bit of traction. Like you said, I lost a little of my focus, you know, like I wasn't, mm -hmm. you, know, I, you know, I was in the military, I was, I'm a veteran and I have a strong connection with my brothers and sisters in arms, you know, and there's no denying mm -hmm. that. Um, I, I was kind of pulling away from it cause I don't want to get stuck like in the veteran niche. Yeah. Um, but it's where it's the, the majority of my foundation. It's what I'm most passionate about. It's, it's where I feel the most at home. You know, when I'm in a mm -hmm. group of all my veteran brothers and sisters, that's where I feel at home. That's home to me. And, um, so I needed to get back to that. So getting back to my backstory, uh, was awesome. And I got such amazing feedback, especially from people that have been following for a long time. You know? I like following you, man. You're one of the most positive people out there. But behind, and, but you're like me, it's like one of those people where it's like, well, what's behind that? Right. You know, what is behind that, that darkness, that deep, you know, I, I finally started talking about it uh, because I just 20 years in law enforcement. So now I'm like, screw you if you're going to put me in stigma or take away my gun and badge and everything. I'm going to talk about the mental health issues I've had, about the suicide uh, thoughts and all the other crap. Because I think if, you know, we have a platform, you have a platform and you've been very outspoken about it. And I like keeping in contact with you because it's like one of those buddy checks. Like yeah. if I'm checking on you I'm, and you're doing good, I'm like, that's good, man. That's really good. Yeah, and that's important, man. And it's one of those things that it's definitely a lesson I learned uh, with the passing of Rory too, was that, you know, there's, there's a, everyone always puts it on the individual, you know, when they take their life, unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, Oh, uh, they should have just reached out, just reach out to somebody. But I think it's a two way street. You know what I mean? I think um, if you truly care about somebody, you should be reaching out to them as well. You know? Um, and I think when you're in the depths of despair, you know, when you're in that, that deep, dark place, that's one of the questions you're wondering. It's like, Oh, why is anybody reaching out to me? You yep. know? And, and why is anybody calling me? And why is anybody texting me? And I think uh, we have a responsibility. You know, if you care about people, then you should probably be reaching out as well. And so I've made it a point, like if someone's on my mind, if I'm thinking about somebody, I'm just going to reach out, you know, and be like, Hey man, are you good? Everything's cool. You know, like, um, and they, they might think it's a totally weird text or a weird like thing, but it's like, yeah, I was just thinking about you, man. I just want to make sure everything was cool. And sometimes yeah. that message just happens to be right on time because they needed somebody to reach out. Mm -hmm. you, you just never know, you know, so I'm not going to, I don't want to live with regret. And so moving forward, if I have a feeling or if I'm thinking about something, I'm just going to reach out yes. and, and do my part. That's what we have technology for. That's what yeah. social media is for. And you can reach out to someone in a million different ways, you know, like a post, do something, do something that shows that you're watching them. So yeah. they know that someone's out there and don't ignore them, man. Yeah. You know? totally. so, so what's great about this whole podcasting and webcams and everything is we have an audience. If you could reach out to anybody right now living, we can't reach out to the dead. Unfortunately, I always used to say, if you could change history, what would you want to tell them? What would you want to tell your audience? Like, what is your main message? Is it, Hey, you know, things are going to be better or is it just listen or, or, or what you have something? Now, I think uh, my main message, right? I mean, you talk about in the kind of the arena that we're in right now yeah. with everything going on. I think uh, the message would be to stay true to your core values, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you value most, you know? And mm -hmm. uh, I think people, it's very easy to get caught in uh, the fear that's, that's being uh, thrown around. You know, there's people dying and that, that's, that's fact. There are people dying for sure. Um, but life, living life, should always be more important than the fear of death. The fear of death should never overtake like the, the, the want and the desire to live. And so that's what I'm, I, I would like to share with, with my audience and with people is like, get out there and live, whatever that means for you. If living for you means you're hunkered down at home with your family because that's where you feel the most comfortable, then by all means do that. 
uh, for me, that's, that's not the case. So it's like, I want to get out and do things. I want to get out in nature with my family. Mm -hmm. I want to have my family over here at my house and have barbecues and do the things that we used to do. Yeah. Um, like I said, there's a likelihood that one of us may get sick. It may happen. Um, but I can't yeah. live like where it's like, I, oh, I'm going to wait for this vaccine or I'm going to wait for the government to take care of me. It's like, I'm just going to do what I can to, to minimize my risk. You know, I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going yep. to do my best not to touch my face. Um, I'm not going to be wearing a mask when I go out because at the end of the day, the masks are asking us to wear, don't stop viruses. No, like, not at all. It's a, you know, and I, it's a joke. And I, right. I hate to say that, but you know, it's and, not, I, and I don't, it, it's such a polarizing time right now, right? Like yeah. there's so many people that are either on one side of the fence or the other. And, you know, it seems like most of the people in my camp are definitely, uh, of the same mindset where it's like, listen, like the, I'm, I'm not gonna, I called it tyranny on my post yesterday, but maybe, maybe tyranny is a, is a, is a too much of a strong word. I don't know, but mm -hmm. I do feel like it's a, it's an abuse of power. to like tell you, I have to wear a mask, you know, like to, to force all these small businesses, you know, yep. that are, that are uh, privately owned to close down. It's like, that's their livelihood. I know. You know like Lowe's, Walmart, Target, all these other places can stay open. But yet these small mom and pops have to mm -hmm. close. How was that essential? You know, so it um it really starts putting things in perspective for me, like where uh, where my loyalties need to lie. You know, and I, I really yeah. I've been questioning. That's a lot the word right there. Yeah. Where your loyalties need to lie, because I think this gets us back to our core being. You know, we're 30, 40 years into this game of life. And, you know, when you first start out, you're one with nature. And I'm not being like nature boy Jason here. I'm like, when I grew up, I, you know, there was woods, there was mountains, there was everything I loved. But you had, you had a certain set of morals and, and uh, you knew what they were, whether that's based off of what you learned from your parents or whatever, but you kind of had a set rule. And then as you get into, you know, living on the government, um, working for the government as a soldier or whatever, like me, working for the Fed. Uh, you kind of lose track of, you know, this isn't like a social experiment. This isn't like, hey, you know what? Um, regardless, I have my job. Screw the small business. No, it can't be like that. And a lot of times, these politicians and I never, I never get in politics with the, with the show. So we'll, we'll rephrase that. Some people that have been adjusted to the steady paycheck for their whole career and not having to worry about that are the ones making the decision. Right. Yep. And that's, you know, I think it's, a, it's our duty, you know, as Americans to look out for these small businesses, look out for mm -hmm. these, um, these businesses. A lot of us grew up with, you know what I mean? Like for, for example, there's a Mexican restaurant that uh, was in the town I grew up in. And um, I, I frequented that restaurant since I was a kid. And then, you know, growing up and then they moved to a, a different city. And now I live in a different city that's like 30 ish miles away. And uh, my wife and I would drive all the way out there just to get Mexican food there and to, uh, you know, patronize mm -hmm. their establishment because it's important to me. I know the owner. I've known him since I was younger. Yeah. And it's like, like, of course, I'm going to go there and support his business uh, over going to like a big chain or a franchise restaurant. Uh, same thing with the gym memberships. You know, there's a lot of these big, huge gyms that are, that are hurting, you know, bad. But there's these smaller gyms like the ones that the one that I go to that it's a franchise, a franchisee. That's like, he's trying his best to like make ends meet. And um, so I told him like, yeah, go ahead and keep my membership like going, you know, he's like, yeah, I, I will. But then there's a point where the state like made him shut off the automatic uh, payments. Um, but it's like, what's 30 bucks a month. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if I can afford it, like why not help out a little bit? You know, I've been paying range dues. Um, even though I haven't been able to go to the range and why not? Right. You know, it's, right. I love that's something I enjoy. I want them to be available when this is over with. Um, same thing with the small businesses, man. I'm doing mail calls every day. I have a paycheck. Not everybody does. If I could support a, a business by ordering t-shirts, hats, or whatever, and promote them as much as I can, I'll do it, man. I mean, I'll go to the local restaurants. I'll do what I can. Uh, but there are people hurting out there. And that's where we're talking about. It's time to open up. Yep. Safely open up. There's ways to do it but you can't say a Walmart is more um, essential than a mom and pops. You can't say yeah. Home Depot is essential as, you know, an individually owned um, hardware store. You can't. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can I can tell you, man. There was a hardware store where I grew up called McVeigh's Hardware, and uh, man, when that thing closed down, I was so bummed out. And the reason it closed is because a Home Depot opened up in the same town, you know. And it's like now mm-hmm. they can't compete anymore. And uh, it's sad because you see those kind of businesses being phased out. And it's it's my kind of like, I guess, mission, if you will, to do my part, my family and I to do our part to keep some of those businesses going, you know, because uh, it means something to me. And that's, that's what this, this country was founded on, you know, was hardworking Americans trying to live that American dream. Mm-hmm. You know? We forget history. Oh, totally. mean, obviously, you know, you know, yeah. I used to think, you know, cause growing up in the eighties and the, uh, the, then through the, you know, the, the cold war and everything, you think people would never forget like Vietnam, right. but then we're in our own little Vietnam. Now we just can't get out of this country. Um, there's things like that that just nobody wants to look back. They're so tunnel visioned that it's 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 unbelievable, man. If you pick pick up a real book, like things people don't realize that there's things out there with pages and books and stuff. <laughs> now everything is on YouTube, <laughs> you right. know. Uh, I, and I think one of the things about podcasting, kind of a, a slight transition and to give us self promotion here, but one thing about podcasting is you do bring stories. Um, that you don't find in books, you don't find in YouTube, you don't find slanted in a two to three minute um, soundbite on TV. Right. And I like telling stories and I like interviewing people. When you first started doing the podcast, was your goal to do an interview format where you talk to different people or was it just like, I want to hear about like what it was like when you first started the podcast and the hiccups. So when I first started, um, it started off, I mean, I think you know the, the story a little bit, but uh, I had mm-hmm. six back surgeries and yeah. I wanted to- Your back uh, story, get it? Right. <laughs> so I wanted to do something where I could um, give back, you know, and, and share mm-hmm. like my story of triumphing over uh, opiate addiction and recovering from that six back surgery without the use of any pills and blah, blah, blah. So I was like, how can I share that story? So it started off as a kind of a narcissistic mission, but like to share my story. Um, and I thought I'll call it my back story. I was like, oh, how awesome would that be to hear the backstories of other people? Yeah. And I can, I can, you know, blend it with my story as we go, maybe. And sometimes if it's, if it's relevant, but if not, I'll just give these people the, the platform to share their backstory. Cause a lot of people have a backstory. And it's like, I think I'm, I'm fascinated by seeing where people are today and how yeah. they got there. Like, it's great to look at someone like say the president of the United States, say Donald Trump, like, but what's his backstory? Like what, yeah. where did he grow up? What was his life? Like, what was this? And like, we can all make assumptions of people based on what we see in the media or what we see, what we think um, or what our judgments are. But for me, it's, it's really awesome to see people where they are today and then yes. get that backstory of how they got there. And it's a good, it's a good framework. Actually, if you're looking towards somebody or you're looking, uh, you're trying to emulate somebody, it's a great framework to be like, well, let's reverse engineer this and figure it all out. And yeah. uh, so the podcast kind of became like an encyclopedia for me, even like asking people what books they read, you know, what their, um, what their life was like, what, what things they uh, regretted in their life, what lessons they've learned. Um, so yeah, it's become like an encyclopedia. So that's how it all started. Um, some of the hiccups along the way, um, I think being a little too bashful, um, I wasn't trying to get like, I don't want sponsorships. I'm going to do this all on my own mm-hmm. and being too prideful where, where that's concerned. Because at the end of the day, we're all in the, in the business to make money and provide for our families. Yeah. Um, and I should have in the beginning been more geared toward keeping it authentic, but at the same time being a realist and knowing that in order to keep this podcast going and supported, I need to get sponsorships. You know, I need to find a way to monetize it um, to make it be as powerful as I want it to be. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest mistakes I had in the beginning. Um, and now I have just a different mindset on all that. So, yeah, we'll have to, you're going to have to school me in that off the line because I, I, I just, you know, I feel so guilty because yeah. I'm like, you yeah. know, I'm like, yep. I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't want to become jaded, you know, because like at the end of the day you have, it took a lot of work for me to fly to people. It took a lot of work for me. To yeah, make, definitely. Uh, a lot of work and money to like fly to them, to set up the interviews, to get the mm-hmm. hotels, the cars and like, yeah, I know you, I was doing you are, things. you are hustling yeah. a, a million hours a day. You and know I what felt I mean? like there was a point where like, I should have been asking for like sponsorships or trying to get sponsorships because, um, 
you know, at the end of the day, I'm releasing all this content for free. So like all this yeah. hard work I'm putting into it, there was nothing really, other than the positive feedback I was getting, there was no like monetary like return on that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not, uh, I'm not upset by that. I just feel like now where I stand, um, I understand, like, I don't, I don't have a real need at the moment to like monetize it because I'm not traveling, yeah. but I'm gearing up toward that to like figure out the best way forward with it uh, from a marketing standpoint, uh, because I do want to keep this thing going. I think that's where podcasts mm -hmm. uh, end up making it is the ones that don't quit. Most of the time people will do a podcast and they just like, they get burned out on it or they're not making any money on it or whatever. And they just, they just give it up, you know, and I'm yeah. not, I don't want to be that guy. So. You need the there has to be some sort of get back in order to, you know, cause I'm, I'm given, uh, you know, the editing, the, the scheduling, the everything kind of gets you after a while. You're just like, yeah. why am I doing this? <laughs> then you're like, then you're like, yeah, I know why I'm doing it. But it's like sponsorship helps because what you're, you're, it's really, it's like a commercial. You're doing a commercial for them. Yeah. Why not get paid for it? If it's going to yeah. support like me, I really want to get Vimeo live uh, and it's $75 a month. So now I, I moved my platform to Amazon. I'm like in a beta version. I think I showed you that, didn't I? Where I'm doing um, Amazon Fire and Roku and putting oh, a nice. show on there. And yeah, man, it's awesome. But the, my, ser my service, I use Vimeo to get it into there. Okay. But if I get Vimeo, then I can start doing like live cast to you know, multiple audiences and all this. But it's 75 bucks, but I'm like, I'm not going to put another 75 bucks a month into something. Right. You know, it's a lot of money, dude. I mean, like for me, like, I, I don't, I don't edit my own podcast, you know, like I didn't want to, I, you know, someone taught me along the way, like do the things you know, you're good at, you know, don't, yeah. don't try and oh, like tackle too much, you know, and mm -hmm. a lot of times your content or a lot of times your, um, your product is going to suffer as a result. If you're trying to do it, do it all. And yeah. you got to know what your strengths and weaknesses are. And for me, like technology is definitely not one of my strengths. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, I, and I can spend time learning it and say like, hey, I, I'm, I'm going to learn it. I'm going to figure this all out. Blah, blah, blah. But it's really not where I want to put my energy. My energy where I want it to be is on networking, on sharing stories, yes. on interviewing people, on learning how to be a better speaker, on learning how to be a better orator and like be able to like um, be more of an influence, you know? Um, yeah. So I, I put my editing off to somebody else that does all my editing for me, but there's a cost associated with it. So you have to really weigh those options. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, if I put my time into learning how to do this myself, how much time is it going to take me? How much is it going to cost? And does it make, you know, financial sense for me to do that? Or does it make more sense to find somebody that that's their passion? That's what they do. Yeah. Let them do it. And, you know, so that's kind of what I decided. But you're, it's an you're the same as me. I, if I could just talk to people and then someone else edit it and make it all pretty, I'd be so happy. I want oh, to yeah. network. I, you know, one thing I love, and uh, I used to do it every guest I had, but it just got, I started doing five or six guests a week. And I used to always make sure everybody from my network knew, uh, here's a contact for this guest. If you want to have them on your show, her, whatever, do it. And I miss that networking aspect of it because I'm editing, editing and editing and booking and scheduling and, yeah, you're right, man. There's got to be a, a flow. I mean, there's got to be something. Yeah. You got to know like where to, where to put your time and energy and effort, you know, and editing was definitely not one of the places where I wanted to put my time and energy. And, so. and technology. Cause I'm thinking I'm like, you know, starting off on one platform, jumping on this platform and then trying to figure out this and that and audio. And it's just like someday when I retire in two years and five months, something I'm counting. I want to be able to just do this. I want to be able to just, I want to teach college and I want a podcast or, or host a, a show or something. Yep. I mean, I love, I absolutely love doing this. Yeah. That's all I want to do, man, is, uh, is podcasting because, um, I don't know, man, it, I finally feel like I've found, uh, something I'm good at. You know what I mean? And I think, um, somebody asked, uh, uh, Colin Powell one time and said, Hey, uh, you know, why'd you stay in the army for so long? You know, why, why'd you choose the army? You know, bright guy, you know, like what, why, why the army? You see, now I just picked something that I was good at and it came easy to me. Yeah. And I think podcasting is the same way for me. Um, it hasn't been easy in the sense of there's been a lot of like getting out of my own comfort zone to, to kind of do some of these interviews. Um, I, there's been a lot of times I've been crippled by anxiety and just worry over like, how's this going to go? Am I going to mm -hmm. come off Friday? Is it all good? Um, and you just have to, you have to overcome that stuff. And I really do believe that that's where the magic happens is when you yes. get out of that comfort zone, you kind of get away from 
what you're used to or what you're comfortable with. And so like me traveling all over the country, normally, man, like to be honest with you, a lot of people wouldn't know this about me, but that's not what I normally would do. Um, I'm usually traveling with a partner, traveling with somebody else, uh, with my wife or with a friend. Mm-hmm. Um, rolling solo all over the country really mm-hmm. isn't my idea of a, an amazing time. Um, but I learned a lot in the process about myself. And uh, so it was cool. It was worth it. Yeah. I love it, man. I love your, I love your podcast. I love your story. I love following you and I love supporting you because it's like we have to support each other and we get a lot of support. I've noticed that I, I've been getting so many comments lately. Um, and I'm sure you have too. What is that like getting feedback, man? I mean, I've never been a real big kudos guy, like, Oh, you pat on the back, but it's, it's, what does it feel like man, to you? To be honest with you, man, um, that's what makes it all worth it to me. You know, like, uh, I think everybody has a, uh, a love language, right? We all have five love languages, whatever that people talk about. Um, and one of those is words of affirmation is one of the love languages. Yeah. And that's definitely one of my love languages, dude. Like I love to know that like somebody is hearing what I'm doing or somebody is appreciating mm-hmm. what I'm doing. Cause a lot of times you'll like be going through it and like, you're like, yeah, I think that was okay. I think I did all right. At the end of the day, most people, especially people like you and I that are doing our own podcast, we're, we're our own worst critics. Yeah. Know? So it's like, did I come off right? Did I ask the right questions? Did I speak intelligibly? Like there's all these mm-hmm. things that are going through your head. So getting that feedback for me has uh, made it all worth it, to be honest with you. Um, because it lets me know, it gives me validation to know that like I'm making a difference. It's not like, Hey, look how badass I am. It's more like, yeah. okay, this is making a positive difference in the world. Good. I'm doing, I'm on the right track. And you know, that's one thing about social media is you could, you could tell the people who are in it for the, the reasons that they should be. And you know, hey, look, if you're straightforward and you're saying, hey, I'm here to make a million dollars, cool. But don't try to get into it and saying, uh, worship me, and by the way, give me money. It doesn't work right. that way, man. Yeah. You have and to be I, I've always wanted to keep it 100, yeah. Keep it 100, keep it authentic. And that's kind of the deal with this whole uh, mental health thing. Is like, you know, I try to keep my, my podcast and, and my um, social media very positive. But at the end of the day, I'm not mm-hmm. afraid to talk about the dark stuff you know to say yeah. like, hey listen like i try my best to be positive there are days when i just want to punch people in the throat you know that's the truth mm-hmm. you know like i'm not i'm not going to be i'm not going to sugarcoat it um there's days where i lose faith in humanity there's days that i i have rough days and don't want to do anything i just want to stay in my house and be lazy yeah um, and i think sometimes like with social media it's like a lot of people you're not getting a real picture. You know, people look at it and they, they're trying to compare their lives to mm-hmm. whoever you're seeing on social media. But in reality, that person probably isn't living the life that you think they are. I mean, the life they're putting out on social media is probably pales in comparison to what their real life actually is. Absolutely, and, um, man. Yeah, so my job, I think, what I've tried to do is make sure what I'm putting out on social media, if you meet me in person, if you come to my home, like what you see in person is exactly what you see on social media. There's, there's literally no difference. There's no like fake facade bullshit. It's like what you see is what you get. So. You, uh, you have to, if you ever, I don't care, China, I'm sorry, you can have it. Uh, TikTok, but there's a TikTok called uh, Influencers in the Wild. And it's people videoing other people taking all these like pretty pictures of themselves and stuff like that. And I'm like, if you're not enjoying the moment, uh, that's why I stopped taking like tons of pictures when, when I'm out with the family and stuff like that, when I'm not doing anything. Um, I dedicate literally like five minutes of social media for taking a snap here and there, but it used to be like, okay, well, here's a, a picture of a nice drink. Here's a picture of me out in the wild. Here's this. If you're not authentic, it's bullshit. Yep. Totally. That's totally bullshit. I, um, I've actually been considering, um, going back to the basics and getting a flip phone old school, like flip phone, text and call. Wow. Um, I mean, I have a, I'm on my laptop. I have a laptop to do all of my social media and, and podcasting stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have a camera, you know, so it's like, I can take pictures when it's warranted, but having yeah. such like, you know, access to this thing, uh, 24 seven, you know, it's like, it almost takes you out of moments. You know, you're in a, in a yeah. beautiful moment. Oh, I mean, let me capture this real quick. No. It's at your fingertips. So you're capturing it. And it's like, why did I just do that? Like, I, it's not really the moment is what's important. Me capturing and sharing with other people who gives a shit. You know what no. I mean? Like, it doesn't matter. You know, like I, um, I think there's a there's a place for it for sure. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I, I just really have been uh, spending a lot of time the last couple of weeks 
considering like getting myself back to the basics uh, of life, you know, and, and spending, yeah. and I find my, I'm, I'm as guilty as a lot of people. I'll be on my phone way too much, you know, and um, I could be spending that time with my kids or doing stuff with them. And uh, I, so I want to get back to that, you know, and just be like, you know, I'm just going to, I'll get a Thomas guide if I need one. You know, and, you know what? I bought two you know, of them. Uh, nice. When this all happened, I yeah. was like, yeah. <laughs> So uh, when, when it first started happening, I ordered one pack of N95s. And this is way before anybody started buying N95s. And um, Amazon ended up sending me four boxes by accident. I ended oh, up wow. donating them out to the – we kept the box for us, but we ended up donating to the volunteers out here, the volunteer yeah. fire department. But uh, <laughs> the first thing I bought was two Thomas guides, one for yeah, each man. car. Because yep. I'm like, once GPS goes out, I want to know how to get from point A to point B like I used to. Yeah, it's totally, it's, it's a, a skill that a lot of us have lost, you know, like yeah, man. Knowing, how, knowing how to navigate, use a map and like whatever. And it's like, I remember those days. I mean, it wasn't that long ago, 2003, it wasn't. 2004. It's like, I was driving, uh, I was a driver and I was driving people all over the place uh-huh. and I used the Thomas guide to get everywhere and I never got lost. And if I did, it was, I wasn't way off usually. It's like, I was just, I just had to make a, a took a wrong turn or whatever. Just uh, to figure it out. I, I, uh, I used to work dope back in the early two thousands in San Diego. And whenever we had to go to LA, it was like, you know, we didn't have GPS as like real good ones back then. We've right. been out to Thomas guy, trying to figure out where the hell I am. <laughs> trying yeah, to figure out how to sure. get out of there. Yeah. Yeah, man. Thomas so I looked for one. They, they have one. Uh, they had one on Amazon. It's pretty expensive. Cause I don't think they're updating them anymore. I think all of them are digital mm-hmm. now. So the mm-hmm. ones you buy are going to be, I mean, they'll be the latest, you know, that they have, but that's the thing with GPS that it, it made, you know, Thomas guys kind of obsolete is that people are building and all these things constantly. And then you just update your software to kind yeah. of, you know, get the new streets, but whatever you get a Thomas guy in a couple of years. You're fine. We need, we need to do a, uh, a podcast one day and living off the grid, get to do a little round table. I, that sounds like heaven to me. I, uh, yeah. I'm trying my best to talk my wife into uh, getting out of California um, I don't think, I don't think it's going to happen anytime, definitely not anytime soon, <laughs> but um, I, I'm really itching to get a nice plot of land, you know, where I have like my own animals, I have yeah. my own stuff where you know, I'm sustainable, you know, where it's like, yeah, I go to the store for certain things or whatever, but if things were to get really bad, like I don't absolutely have to go to the store. I have enough yeah. stuff here to sustain me for quite a while. And I'm not talking about being like some crazy prepper, oh. um, but I just, I don't know. I, it's like, I can, where I'm sitting right now, I'm in my, uh, my living room and I can see my neighbor's house. Uh, if yep. I open the, the blinds of that, I can see the neighbors on the other side and it's like, I can spit on their house. That's how close they are. One you know, of my, like, uh, one of my favorite new shows was that we bought a farm yeah. and it was like uh, little farms, you know, you're going to do like a little bit here and there, but you're not going to be a, uh, not these huge farms. I want a couple cows. I want sheep. I want chicken. Yeah, man. And some veggies. I want to be able nice. to go out and I want to, I want to go out my back porch. I want 300 yards behind me. Well, not 300. Well, 300 meters. We'll go. Same thing. You know what I mean? And I want to just be able to shoot. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be able to just shoot off my back deck, man. Totally. How hard, how hard, that's not much to ask. Yeah. And I think uh, there's something to be said for those kind of people. Like if you live in an area that supports that, like if I, if I were to go to Texas where I want to go, mm-hmm. I've already lived there. I lived there for four years. And it's like, me too, brother. The people, the people had, there, what? nice, dude. I was in, uh, in Austin, so uh, yeah. or a little south of Austin. And Austin's a little funky now. It's kind of like they call it California East now. Mm-hmm. But if you, um, I, I would go up uh, by Fort Worth. Yeah. And uh, I got some friends up there. And it's just, you know, I don't know. The people there are just, Salt of the earth, man. They look yes. after one another. You know, you see someone broken down on the side of the road. I know. You stop. You help them. You offer some help. You know, you see someone working on their house. You're probably going to stop and say, hey, man, you need help, mister. You know, it's like people there are just kinder to, to one another. And, it's, mm-hmm. and I'm not making that up. It's not like some, you know, um, magical thinking kind of thing. Like, oh, you're just, I'm, I'm uh, you know, turning this into some uh, fairy tale or whatever. But it's not, I've seen man. it. I've witnessed it. And it's really true. You know, they're, they're, the people there are hundred percent different than the people that are here in California. hundred mm-hmm. percent. I concur, and brother. Not to say they don't exist here in California. It's just not the, it's not the norm. You know, you see no. people broken down. It's like, you keep going, you know, it's like, I got shit to do. You know, I'm on my way. <laughs> I, uh, you know, yeah, man, Texas where it's at. I'm, I'm debating Texas or Florida and I like Texas more just because, you know, I don't know. 
You're That's right. It's just it is, man. Yeah, and then there's a uh, with Florida. I, I don't know if I could um, get down with uh, with hurricanes. You know, I know they have tornadoes. That's the thing in Texas. too, man. But uh, that's that's I definitely because my wife wants to be near the water, so you know I want to be by the beach. It's like, yeah, but you know but, if you live, you are three hours away. You know you got Corpus Christi Bay. There you go, Robert Earl Keane. Right. If you know who that is, you have to Google it when you're done here. Robert what? Robert Earl Keane. He's a singer out of Texas. Just incredible man. Good good folky so countryish. Yeah, really good man. For well, sure. brother, I am off to another podcast, but I really appreciate you. Coming absolutely. on, man. When I'm done with this uh, 12 part podcast series, I'd love to have you on. I know we yeah, talked absolutely. about it, and I just haven't made it happen yet. So I'd love to have you on my podcast. Yeah, um, anytime, man. Yeah, whenever you're down for it, it'll be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when you're done with the 12 part, on. tell me, I'll bring it back on and we'll promote it out as well. All right, cool, man. Cool, man. Well, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you, man. And thanks again. Thanks.